The reviews are out, sales are going up, and shenanigans are afoot. Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard released their review embargo today, or at least it was up today, and the conversation is absolutely wild. So let's get into all of this. If you guys have been paying attention to this situation as closely as I have, Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard, what, interest, what interests me the most about it has very little to do with whether or not the game is good or not. I'm already out, they put stuff in the game that I'm not a fan of, but what I wanted to see is how the rest of the population takes it. How people who maybe no, don't care about the politically charged messaging in the game, what their opinions are on it. And right now, it seems that that door is still wide open. It hasn't been shut yet for a lot of people. But moving over here, let's go over here really quickly and to show you some of the things that I've been seeing talked about today as well as things that have been talked about for the last few days. So over on Steam, as you can see right here, Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard is up to number four on the Steam charts for top sellers. This moved up a little bit today from when I checked it the very first thing this morning. It was very first thing this morning. I get up very early, so I was uh, up uh, a lot earlier than a lot of other people. This is interesting though, after the review embargo released, all of a sudden it bumped up a notch or two. I think it was at six this morning when I checked it. Now, the conversation around this is less so about whether or not the game itself is good, but how EA could potentially be curating the reviews that are out. <clears throat> Popping over here, as you can see on Open Critic, a curation site that finds all of the reviews and then just curates it, and critics recommend it 81%, but a lot of these guys are just the big dogs in the industry. These are the ones that you definitely want on your side because they have a lot of eyes. However, what a lot of people thought was very interesting is that even though these reviews all seem to be fairly decent, there's a lot of you know, sixes and sevens in here as well. But a lot of people are doing nines and tens and we're just going, whoa, wait a second here. Hold on, nines and tens for this game? Come on, this isn't the best game of the decade. A 10 should be reserved for best game of the decade. Like, come on, like, are we really gonna go there? And a lot of people also thought it was very, very interesting that we ended up with things like this. Um, That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Two reviews from massive YouTube channels, Skill Up and Mr. Matty Plays, over here saying they didn't like the game. They don't recommend it, and they don't really feel that it fits in for the Dragon Age <clears throat> IP. This set off a firestorm that uh, people on YouTube have already been talking about. Luke, Luke Stevens talked about it on his channel. He was like, well, that's kind of weird. That, they're, that you're getting reviews like this that say it's just absolutely god awful, but a lot of other places that are reviewing that are even somewhat reputable are saying that it's really good. He's like, so where's the disparity and why is it here? Now, another YouTuber out there, Legendary Drops, one that I've become familiar with very recently, and I actually like a lot of his takes. This is, and this is a screenshot from what he did a, earlier today over on Twitter. He says, this Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard situation is the most mask off attempt at scamming an audience I've ever seen. Legacy media is throating it while historically positive creators and players are saying it's a dumpster fire. You fucking absolute morons, you thought it would work. That is a hot take and a half. And I, I, I don't know if I disagree with it because seeing all of, because we know that leading up to this release and we know that getting here to the reviews, they were puppy guarding those review codes. They weren't handing them out to a lot of usual suspects, people that you thought would actually be playing this game and reviewing it once the review embargo was up. And one of the interesting things is that there's been a few people talking about it. Luke Stevens on his live show last week actually talked about how he wasn't going to be reviewing it on release because he didn't have a code. And there have been a few other people out there who talked about it, most notably <clears throat> today. Uh, this video dropped uh, over on the Fextra Life channel, a channel I'm not very familiar with. In fact, not very, I just came across them today. But this is what they had to say about uh, some interesting happenings before the review embargo was up. So let's hear what they have to say. And just to illustrate how mild that our criticisms were of the Veil Guard, after publishing our impressions video, we got called shills, 
Some people accused us of being paid by Bioware and EA to promote the game, which of course we're obviously not. I was even contacted by another content creator who had attended the event that asked me why my criticisms were worded more cautiously and asked me if I was concerned when I made my video that I'd be denied access to a review code. To which of course I replied, no, I'm not worried about getting denied access to review code. That simply doesn't happen in the gaming industry. But I was not concerned about this at all. I reassured him that he shouldn't be concerned about this because it's just not really a thing in the gaming industry. It's, it's so rare that it shouldn't scare someone into not saying what they think about a game. So after publishing our video, nearly immediately, our contacts at EA and Bioware stopped replying and communication went to zero. That's really interesting. <clears throat> you see, a lot of times, whenever you float the idea that companies will selectively pick who they're going to send review codes to and stuff like that, you're called a, a, a theorist, right? A conspiracy th theorist. Companies just wouldn't do that. And it's really interesting to see that when a lot of people go, no, companies uh, well, companies will beg, borrow, and steal to get whatever message out there that we want. And we know this is true. We've seen it time and time and time again. And what was really interesting about this is, like I said, I wanted to see how some of the reviews came out. But hearing that they were basically curated reviews, hearing that certain YouTube channels that I was like, okay, let's see what they have to say about this, didn't get the codes to do reviews, definitely you start asking questions. Why? And some of them were saying, well, the game is either going to suck or they're trying to protect spoilers. But more and more, it seems like that's not exactly the case. Now, moving over here, over to Twitter, uh, Legendary Drops, the channel I just mentioned, uh, had this to say the other day. <clears throat> this is a clip from his live channel. Let me blow that up for you guys. Been on YouTube for 11 years. He's been making videos on video games for over five years. This dude's been working on working in the RPG scene for even for for probably four years plus. And this is a person that you don't give a code to that you know is critical of the game. He's one of the biggest people in the entire scene, and this is who you go and ignore. I'm sorry, what they're doing right here is fucking purposeful. I don't give a shit what anybody says. They do not want to give codes to people that are critical of the game. They are trying to make sure that this game is received as beneficially as possible before its release. I think that optically, this is fucking bad. It was done purposefully. And two, at the exact same time, I think that what this really is, uh, or, or how this game's going to be received, is I think that it's going to be a solid game. I, I don't think it's going to be a bad game. I think it's just going to be a solid game. Not great. Not insane. Not top tier or anything like that. It's just going to be a decent game, but it's just not going to land well with a lot of audiences because I think that I like ideologically, the game is going to diverge away from what kind of experiences people are looking for, the kind of stories that they're looking for, the kind of characters they're looking for, and the art style that they're looking for. And more importantly, the fucking combat. Like, even though there's some people that are like, I think the, I think the. So he makes a very good point there. <clears throat> He makes a very good point there. Optically, this doesn't look bad, but who is seeing it? I happen to know that a lot of people that I engage with and talk about these games with, they're not over here on Twitter. They don't care about the Twitter discourse. They don't care about a lot of social media discourse, but they will watch certain reviews and they will watch what happens with reviews online, especially, again, they'll go to Open Critic, they'll go to Metacritic, they'll go to those review sites, see what they have to say. And that could absolutely sway people. In fact, it was funny. I was talking about this with my buddy just before the review embargo was up and then skill up dropped his review. And he was like, oh, hey, skill up, drop his review. He's like, hmm, the title says he doesn't seem to recommend it. And I was like, really? I was like, well, I'll tell you what, buddy, let's listen to this real quick and we'll uh, have a conversation afterwards. And I, my buddy calls me back as soon as he's done with the video and I just finished it. And he goes, dude, he goes, that was bad. And I'm like, dude, that was really bad. And he then proceeded to tell me that he went from going, that he was going to buy this game day one and play it to because of Skillup's review, he's going to wait for that game to either go on Game Pass or have a steep, steep sale on it. So this all just lends 
one more piece of evidence towards the fact that EA absolutely is trying to convince people to buy this game and trying to make sure that people buy this game. That probably explains that a lot of people saw certain articles, certain stuff pop up, and it jumped up in the Steam rankings just a little bit, which is really interesting. <clears throat> I am wondering here how this game breaks down for the general public that plays it. Because again, a lot of people are absolutely involved in the culture war and it does seem that they put a lot of culture war stuff in Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. And one of the things that I think that they're doing is they're not counting on the one side that's not gonna play the game for it. And they probably know how many people from the other side who are gonna play the game because they incorporated the culture war stuff but what they're trying to do is they're trying to trick the general population who doesn't care about any of that into buying the game, into thinking that it's actually a good game. But then again, Mr. Matty plays and Skill Up came out with absolute bombshell reviews. Reviews that I didn't think that I was going to see from them. In fact, I've only ever seen a few Skill Up reviews from video games and I don't really watch him very much because, well, to be perfectly honest, he doesn't have a whole lot of teeth in his reviews, if you know what I mean. He, in my personal opinion, he tends to go easier on games than I think that he should. And so after watching, I don't even know how many videos I watched back in the day, five or 10, I was like, eh, you know what? I just don't think that he's as critical as he should be. I was, I was baffled when Skill Up said what he said. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait a minute. This is the dude that I wrote off years ago for not being critical. And he laid out a really, really good case. You guys should go check out the skill up review and see what that is. But overall, this is the last chance that BioWare has to basically stay solvent. BioWare as a company hasn't been the same for a long time. You can go out there. There are lists out there of how many people have left BioWare since 2015. The company is no longer the same. The people who developed Dragon Age and Mass Effect and all the games that you love from BioWare are no longer there. Maybe one or two, but they're outweighed by the people that have less experience, less writing chops, less game design chops than the people who created the absolute classics that all of us know and love. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people are looking for. Can this new Bioware pull off a game as good as the old Bioware? And it would seem that with what looks like the games that EA is playing, they can't. And they need to pull out all the stops. They need to get as much uh, uh, positive uh, publicity out there. So that way they can skate these initial reviews. Now, here's the thing. Because a lot of channels out there and a lot of people out there who would normally review these on drop, they would have had the game two weeks ago, three weeks ago, playing it then. But now we're going to have to wait for other reviewers to go out there play that game for 40 or 50 hours, write a script, make a video, do all that. Dude, we're looking at probably at least a week, maybe two before regular criticism from the channels that we love to watch is able to even come out because EA is playing this game. So they essentially bought themselves at least a week to two weeks worth of lead time of nothing but positive reviews, hoping to probably boost their sales. It's gonna be interesting. I wanna tune back into Steam on the day that it launches, which is Halloween, to see where Dragon Age the Veil Guard sits and if this conversation is actually affecting the sales amongst, again, the population that doesn't pay attention to the culture war, because that's really interesting. That's more interesting to me than whether or not a game contains this stuff or not. Because if you see the culture war stuff in a game, you have already immediately made up your opinion. But again, I see a lot of people out there that say they don't care about that. And so it's like, ooh, what do you care about? It's like, well, I care about reviews from my favorite people who do it. Oh, they weren't given a review code. So I'll just have to wait for them. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for checking out this video. I absolutely appreciate all of you being here. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call, it seems. And so as always, if you guys like what I have to say, check out these videos that are popping up on the screen right now. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.